everyone, I'm Bonnie from Really Reasonable Ribbon and Make Time to Craft. Today I'm back with my Bow It All version 3.0 and I'm going to teach you how to make a basic double loop bow with both double and single face or printed ribbon. I've demonstrated this bow before, but it's such a staple bow I thought it deserved its own video so you can easily find it and review if necessary. My card today was made with a fabulous sentiment from Inspired by Stamping and all of the dies are from Cheery Lynn Designs. Here are some samples of double loop bows using the July Ribbon Club assortment from Really Reasonable Ribbon. These monthly color or holiday themed assortments are a great way to build your ribbon stash and try new ribbons. Today I'm going to be creating two bows, one using the figure eight wrap for ribbons that are double faced or meaning the same on both sides. I'll also show you how to create the same bow using ribbon that is either printed or only finished on one side. For today I have the pegs in the four and the five and a half inch holes to create a one and a half inch wide bow. First up I'm going to be using about 16 inches of the 5 8 inch grape delicate stitched satin ribbon. This is a nice lightweight ribbon that is the same on both sides. Um, the figure eight wrap is best for a lighter weight ribbon because you're able to tighten it down enough that the center doesn't look wonky. So we're starting with the ribbon behind the pegs and we're going to go around the right side and then to the left in a figure eight pattern. And we're going to do that twice so that there's two loops on each peg and we're going to end going through the center. Now the ribbon coming out the left, I am going to fold the ends into the center to create a narrower center for the bow. I've crossed over in the back, we're going to come down through the middle and out the bottom. I'm going to switch hands and we're going to make a loop with the ribbon in my left hand and with the right ribbon we're going to go down through the loop and out the right side which creates our locking C knot. I'm going to lightly tighten it and take a look if there's any adjustments. I kind of want it gathered so that the loops are separated. Not one way overlapping the top of the other. When you're satisfied, you're just going to do the gentle rocking back and forth to tighten it down as much as you possibly can while trying to keep that center knot in centered between the two pegs. At this point, you can clip tails if you want to, or you can wait until it's off. I think we'll wait. And for this bow, I want to pull rather than make the tails go down. I prefer them going out to the side. So whichever way you want them to be, kind of train them in that direction before you remove it. I'll take the bow off the pegs and if there's any fluffing necessary with the loops, you can do that. That is a pretty nice looking bow right off the pegs. I typically dovetail my ends so I fold it in half and create that dovetailed clip and another thing I do with just about every bow that I make is at this point I will stick a paintbrush into the loops and I take a dab of glue and put it right around there on the tail and I will center that which you know whatever if you want it this way then put your glue down there and I will glue the tail exactly where I want it to stay. That's how my tails on my bows are always perfectly the way that I want them and I will do that to both sides adjust however 
And then when it's on your project, it's going to stay exactly the way you want it to stay. So that's the first one with the double face ribbon. Now we have a printed ribbon. It's white on the back and the printed lattice on the front of the double face satin. So if we were to figure eight, <clears throat> you would see that one side would be white and the other side would be pink, which is not something that we want. So we're gonna start with the ribbon around the back and rather than figure eighting, we're just gonna go all the way around the outside of both pegs twice until we have two loops on each side. And just like last time, the ribbon on the, coming out the left, I'm gonna fold to the center to make that narrower center for the bow. Crossing over in the back, coming down through the bottom, switch hands like I always do and make a loop with the ribbon in my left hand, down through the loop, tie and create the locking C-knot. So at this point we also, depending on, you know, they kind of cooperated for me this time, they don't always. If you have white facing you, then you have to do a little twisting in the back because you want your tails to be pink facing you when you're tying the knot. So you can see how, you know, on either side, one loop gobbled up the other one a little bit, and that happens in this type of wrap. But the way I get around that is I pull my toothpicks out. You can use whatever you have handy that will do the job. I separate these loops and I stick a toothpick in on either side. Yes, this is a little extra work, but it makes a huge difference in the final look of your bow. So once you get the toothpick in on either side, we're gonna try to get it towards the middle. And what this does is it forces each loop to pleat individually without really taking over the other loop. You may have to help it along a little bit. And then with the toothpicks in there, I start rocking to tighten my bow. This one's kind of not cooperating, so we'll have to force him. You can squeeze that and then help the other loop open up. Sometimes a bow will come together easy peasy and sometimes it will fight you the whole time. But you're in charge, so make it do what you want it to do. And again, this is a double faced printed ribbon. So this ribbon is thicker than the ribbon that we used for the first bow. So it's not going to tighten down as far. So that's about as good as it's going to get. And we're just going to pull the toothpicks out, lift it off, you can separate the loops a little bit. I'll dovetail the ends. But again, your preference, if you prefer them angled or whatever you want the ends to look like, that's how you trim them. And again, with my paintbrush, I will go in and I will do my gluing on either side so that this, especially like see how that's folded over a little bit. It won't matter if you do my little gluing trick because you will glue it, it will look, from the part that is seen, it will look fine and no one will even know there's that little fold over in there. So that is basically how you make this simple double looped bow. This, this bow is great for so many projects. Sometimes a simple bow is all you need to accent the other parts of your card. So thanks so much for joining me and learning how to master this basic double loop bow. If you liked the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll be notified when I add new videos. Happy crafting!